I am Thor, son of Odin. As long as there is life in my breast, I am running out of things to say. Great, another broken white boy for us to fix. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Well, good night, forever! Welcome, Internet, to another episode of News from the 616, the Blackest MCU podcast in all of the multiverse, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And I am one of your hosts of News from the 616, Tatiana King, a.k.a. Little Vision Burt, a.k.a. Wicked Witch of the West View, and Agatha Darkness is Spreading. And as usual, I'm joined by my lovely rosy shaded co-host my wonder man uh glasses it is your boy <laughs> dj ben i mean wonder man still has not made an appearance sad no. sad aka brother voodoo child bofa <laughs> bova yes. holla 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 black adam warlock a nightmare on ellis street lieutenant good trouble yes. big it up big it up Big a tub, real big tings this episode, and that's one of my favorite AKs of yours for for. Views. Yes, and also you know this, they you know they even said it in this episode. You know yes. she has the best nickname of anyone. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we're back to talk more things. Wandavision. We are now in episode seven, titled "Breaking the Fourth Wall," directed per usual by Max Shackman, teleplay and show run by Jack Schaefer, and. Pretty much all the staff has been credited for writing this episode. If you want to know their names, hit up their IMDb page. But we're here to talk all things about this episode. So let's get started with just a basic plot. It's a modern world as Wanda's past actions have started to catch up with her. And she has to rely on the help of Agatha to keep her kids in check. Is it helping though? Is it? Because as predicted on our very own show, Views from the 616, it was Agatha all along. (laughs) Plus, Monica gets the best superhero creation story of all time and Vision wastes time with Darcy on the latest episode of Wanda. Vision. Ooh, we gonna talk about that. Um, you know, but first, before we talk about something, hopefully, you know, we can get Luna or someone to just put some numbers up on the board right here. You know, like Woo! some points, some rebounds, some triple doubles, some slam dunk contests. You know, some championships because I mean, we're we're first of all we're goaded. We're goaded. Completely, yeah. positively goaded. We need yeah. some Braun and Dwayne Wade, what, you know, comparisons right now. <laughs> what is our uh, like, like what? What do they say in, in, ba- in baseball? What is our average right now? Like mm, it's high. Now I only like baseball. You know, basketball. We talk straight up basketball. We dropping triple 50, doubles. Triple doubles. There we go. Triple doubles. <laughs> Braun yes. and Wade. You know, Curry and Thompson. Whoever you want to put up, Jordan Splash and Pippen. Splash Brothers. Yeah, however you want to call it. You know, it's here. The Snap Brothers, that's what we are. But uh, Ooh, <laughs> yes. I like that. The Snap Brothers. So, listen, we thank y'all. We're also saying this because we want to thank y'all for everyone who's been giving us our props. It was like, mm-hmm. yo, y'all called it for all nerds. Y'all called the views from the 616. Y'all y'all got it. How did y'all know? Because we do mad research. And also, shouts out to the one person who was like, y'all, I can't listen to y'all show no more because y'all too accurate. Mm. Shouts <laughs> out to my brother, uh, Young Guru, who also says that he does not like one division right now because he feels it's way too predictable and everything he called from the very first episode. Well, Guru is a prophet, so yeah, I'm that's like, come on, like, man, he you has mad to relax. Smart, like, dog, he's, like, he's literally one of the watchers, so I'm like, relax, <laughs> sir. Max, like, yeah. of course you're Hank gonna be McCoy like, I've seen the beast, this. as he calls himself. Like, yeah, of course, of course he's gonna figure this shit of out. Of course you're gonna figure out. Of course you're gonna see. You know we love you regardless, but come on, Guru. Like, yeah. you're Guru. Let's go, man. Yeah. Because this yeah. show is dope, and we put a lot of research into views from the 616, because WandaVision is a solid-ass show, y'all. Like, yes. pass off to these writers, to everyone involved from top to bottom, the production, every little detail. And I, I just love to see a show that pays so much attention to all the little details, because it's really not as difficult as people make it out to be. You know, it's like you can either, it's easy, you know, it's easier to not do this type of stuff. That's what it is. No, that's you know, true. That's true. Yeah. Well, I I understand confusion, particularly in the first three episodes, particularly because uh, mm. I don't know why I said particularly twice like that. But those first three episodes were 
out of left field mm-hmm. for a lot of people. I mean, generally, yeah, he wanted some action too. That was Drew's other, you know, yeah, thing. yep. That people were expecting action right away, and then generally speaking, while there's stuff to figure out in all sorts of Marvel shows and movies, you typically get the the understanding right away, like mm-hmm. what you're watching, what's going on, who these people are. This one you got thrown in, you were like, "Where the hell am I?" Facts. So I completely understand the confusion. Um, a lot of I I wasn't that confused when we first started because we had a lot of research even going into it and, mm-hmm. and i was just thinking about how would they do this and, and also using some of this some of it is just common sense right you know the multiverse is coming you know all this other stuff all these stories are trying to get pieced together disney bought fox so it's just mm. like well fox 21st century fox so it's just like okay how can they do this creatively right and also ben and mean and i are also writers so mm-hmm. this we think in those terms a lot so it, it, it's not to say it's been easy because it has not at all and mm-hmm. some of the times we still feel like we reach in, but <laughs> yeah, or, or and some of the times we've been wrong. Like and it's mad wrong, fun. Yeah. It's mad funny to me to think back, and we weren't the only ones. But so many people thought Herb was the high evolutionary just because his name was Herb. And then I'm reading a we comment. We did too. Other, I'm yeah, because the other day or just the other day I'm reading this. Um, what was that? Uh, oh, the Ultimates. I was reading the Ultimates by Al Ewing, and in that uh, read the alternate universe, another multiverse. Reed Richards, the maker. Mm-hmm. Calls high evolutionary herb, and I'm like, oh, you know, oh, okay. herb. He's like, there it is. But if anything, no. it could it could just even be an homage, if nothing. Yeah, else. definitely, probably that. You know, because yeah, high yeah. evolutionary is definitely involved in Scarlet Witch's history, and some other stuff. We'll get into this episode that Atsy might turn up, so we might even still be seeing a high herb. Atsy might be the high evolutionary. We we don't know. We'll we see. we don't know. However, what we do know is all of the themes of the episodes that we'll be talking to Ooh. starting right now. Let's Say go. it again. Say themes of, of the, the episode. episode. There you go. There we are. Starting with number one, the main theme and also the title of this episode, which is uh, breaking the fourth wall. Mm. For those who don't know what that terminology means, it's essentially um, from a story standpoint, when characters often refer to you as the viewer or refer to the real world, even though they're technically in a fictional space or universe or what have you uh it's a it's a tool that's used in many different types of stories and and, and many different types of genres and it's used most cases for comedic effect Uh, i don't remember seeing it in any like horror or anything like that but i know people have used it very creatively before oh people have used it in everything now but it's Mm. it goes back to pretty early television and it's basically because they're breaking the fourth wall the fourth pane of the television wall the one that we're looking at them through so they're looking at us talking to us uh most people of like my generation know it from ferris bueller ferris bueller's day off where he's Mm. you know talking through the camera throughout the thing and just making jokes and asides and stuff like that um and then of course a lot of people have brought up something well malcolm in the middle but also parker lewis can't lose was another show it was like right before malcolm in the middle and parker lewis was actually a takeoff kind of a ferris bueller's but Parker Lewis was fire as hell, too, in his own way. And he did all that for breaking the fourth wall. And then as we get into this, Modern Family, um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, all these yeah. type of shows now where it's much more common. And, you know, because people are all doing meta takes yeah, on yeah, yeah. old television. Like Modern Absolutely. Family is just a meta take on the old style of comedy that we've already seen before on One Division. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned one of them that this episode. Uh, and this theme of breaking the fourth wall references, which is Modern Family. They mm-hmm. have this Modern Family style approach to the episode itself with similar set, the camera work, the comedy style, the writing, even the reactions the character give, those those really kind of, at times, over-the-top reactions, things people say. And really, it's real reactions you would probably have in real life. Like, if mm-hmm. your mom was Wanda and she was saying some wild shit, you'd probably be looking at the camera too, like, what the fuck is going on? Um and also that style of the confessional. So mm-hmm. when the character is sitting down at a, at a chair or a couch and talking directly into the TV as if they're speaking with a therapist. Which is funny because that really comes from real world, real world and MTV. Mm. You know, like real world was doing that as a way of doing a reality show. And then people incorporated that into written television where you, in scripted television where you have shows like Modern Family where they yes. have the same confessionals that were done on real world. So it's so interesting how that all worked out and how the history of television blended together. Yeah. And 
Also, on Modern Family and on WandaVision in this episode, these confessionals are meant to represent their inner state of mind because we Mm -hmm. see that really come up with Vision later on. But, absolutely yeah. absolutely and mm-hmm. i like that you mentioned reality shows because that's another aspect that mm-hmm. i almost skipped over just the fact that you're using that double entendre of this being a reality show it, it mm. really is wanda's reality show when you really think about it mm-hmm. it's her version no. of the real world yeah super super yep mm-hmm. and we also see I it can't when believe they haven't done a real world reference that's such a like it could have went over oh. our heads what if it went over our heads already no, no, because I, I grew up on that shit. There's no way that's going over my head. Like, but, and, but also they would have st- did it by now because they're in the, the 90s what 2000s. I mean. Yeah, and I, I've seen people commenting, like I talked about how they really kind of stripped the 90s, and that was a miss because they do, you know, what happens when things get real. They could have done that <laughs> intro. This is the story of people. Again, oh my god! That again, been, for yeah. all you know, this could be on a cutting room floor. Facts, yeah, right, know. writers room floor. Who knows where that one got cut? Yep. Yeah. yeah. As you mentioned, with these this, this idea of a confessional, we have Wanda self narrating her own actions, and the things she's saying is pretty hilarious, especially in that first scene where she says, where she talks about letting the anger get the best of us and intentionally expanding the border of the false world we created. That we created. Very big line right mm. there that we created right away, letting you know, as we have been saying on this show, that Wanda did not create Westview's uh, hex by herself. Yeah, she was. And, and but it's interesting because, again, she says that. And if, if she, we're using the definition you're saying, why then does she keep saying, I don't know how this started? I don't know how we got here. But is she aware that it's a we controlling everything? She's a, okay. This is what I've been saying before. Her, she came to Agatha with a request or hoping, or Agatha came to her one or the other, however it went down. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we'll bring Vision back. You know, just go like, get his body. All right. You know, the details, that's what I'm saying. The details we don't know. And that's very important, right? It's more like, I need Vision back. That's where yes. she's at. Okay. So then Agatha or someone comes to her and's like, I can bring vision back. After that, it's purple to your eyes. Who knows what happens? You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. where I'm going with it. I don't not think that's why she's like, I don't know when this started. It's not that I don't know what happened. I don't know when this started. You know, I don't know how okay. it started. It's like a dream because someone did the purple to your eyes. Mm, okay. Yep. Okay. That That's good to understand yeah. thank you for sharing that yeah that's also, what i'm saying i don't think wanda's yeah. been in control of herself for a long time here i i, I well that's i totally agree with that mm-hmm. because it's, it's clear that she has no she doesn't have she wasn't necessarily the impetus of all this Mm-mm. No, no she was in the fact that i think she won a vision back but yeah but how like, this I, happened and that's what i mean because the kids are what somebody else wants yeah. you know but she just wanted vision back. And so they're like, okay, you want vision back? Well, this is how you get vision back. And, you know, but probably didn't even tell her all that. It was just like, okay, you want vision back? Boop. All right, let's go. Get vision back. You know, Boop. go get his ass from the thing. You know, yeah. set up this town. Yeah. All along. <laughs> that song's been stuck in my head all weekend. Oh, uh, man. And speaking of vision, he also has uh, a few scenes where he's self narrating, like he's in therapy, talking, and and again hitting the fourth wall on himself because he realizes that this is bullshit. That he's in a confessional in the first place, and he's like, "Why am I even talking to you? I have places to be. I'm trying to get home to my wife." Uh, I, I I liked it a lot. And that's the interesting part about that scene, right? When he stands up, he's outside of the truck. He leaps up, and then you we see him flying out of the truck that he was just sitting in. Mm-hmm. So it's meant phasing, like we, phasing through like normal, phasing through the truck like normal. So it's meant to represent that that is his mind. You know, what I mean, all these things are just in their mind because he was sitting mm. outside the truck and then he stands up. You should have seen him fly off, but no, you see they show it because all these things are just the confessionals are just in their head. Mm, okay. Okay. Yep. Also, in terms of kind of the the stylistic approach to this episode, when we're talking about breaking the fourth wall, you mentioned all these different shows, including The Office. Uh, that song sounded similar to The Office, but it actually mimics the credits to the show Happy Endings, mm-hmm. which is a show that the Russo brothers worked on. I had no idea about this, Ben. I did not. I think I might have heard of the show. I might have read the script because I read a lot of pilot scripts, so I might have read the pilot. Not sure, but it's a show about relationships. 
and, you know, 20-somethings going through life and all that type of thing. Fourth but, wall breaking again. If that's yep. what it's about, what is Wanda doing right now? Going through life, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 So, yep. like I said, if you want to watch this, watch it. Again, it's from the, well, I don't know if it's their stuff, but they worked on it. The Russo Brothers. Again, this show is called Happy Endings. And if you watch it, there's one YouTube video where you watch it side by side with the WandaVision episode actually playing, where they're mm-hmm. showing her name and all the different styles and places. It's really cool. And also, there's something, there's a point in that intro where they get to like those cutouts of the, like when you cut out magazine letters. Mm-hmm. And it spells out, I know what you're doing, Wanda. Mm. Whose message is that? Good question. <laughs> Whose message is that? Who's saying, I know what you're doing? And again, is that trying to throw us off the trail? Is that actually implicating Wanda, saying she's doing this? Or is this Wanda trying to get out? Like, that's one thing about this series that, that I still don't think is really predictable and that's why i like it so much is who's really in charge like mm-hmm. yeah different you want to maybe f- physically responsible for the magic and those wall and the scarlet energy and all that stuff the hex energy however who's really doing things this episode is agatha all along but is it really is it another person or another being in the mix yes <laughs> I, I like mean, to play. Say- yes. I've been saying this for like, you know, weeks now. I've been watching one division all week and your love is real. I've been watching one division for five weeks and yes, there's somebody else in charge. Okay. Yep, yeah, we're going to get into that. But and- I know when I was watching that joint, yeah. as soon as I like my eyes are quit, though, I saw I was like, "Oh, I know what you're doing, Wanda." I was like, as it was flashing by, I was like, "Oh, okay, I get it." <laughs> Man, I'll be on it. I'll uh, be on it. Also, I'll be on it. In the fourth wall category, we also have on that calendar at the end of that that mm-hmm. intro sequence, it has Wanda as the name of the month yep. and the heart around the 10th day. Yep. So here's my question to you, because I wasn't sure what that was supposed to mean. Uh, this is, correct me if I'm wrong, Monica, when she decides to go back to work with S.W.O.R.D. and stuff, that's the ninth day, right? Is, is, isn't, I recall Hayward or someone saying people, oh, people haven't been back in weeks, like, this no, is day she nine. hadn't been Someone back in said weeks. That. Wanda had taken the body nine days ago. Was what nine it was. days ago. So yes. if today's episode has a heart circle around the tenth, are they trying to say only technically only one day has passed? Is is time that effed up in the hex or one is, day has passed in the hex? Okay. Uh, yeah. Even that, though there's been multiple episodes with both day and night. No, no, no. One day has passed since the last episode. This is the first one where it's like continuous from an episode before that. Okay, so no. you, that's what you're you're saying. It doesn't really mean. What no, I I, I'm not sure exactly about that. You know, y'all can correct us in the comments on twitch.tv slash for all nerds because <laughs> I'm not sure on that one. But I do know that this is one of the first episodes that actually makes reference to things that happened in a prior episode. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The other episodes have been pretty much where it's like other, you know, things just keep going. It's mm-hmm. like TV shows. And that's mm-hmm. something about TV, you know, especially old school TV. There was no continuance pretty much. Like there's certain shows where... Or uh, continuity, as they say. You know, it's like okay. every episode, you could just watch any, you know, episode of The Honeymooners. And nothing that ever happened in an early episode of The Honeymooners matters. Flintstones, anything you want to think about, you know. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. all oh, so those as- shows. The yeah. aspect of the continuity has been introduced now. But then you start watching. I remember the first time I watched uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And they broke the front door of the bar. And then in the next episode, the front door of the bar was broken. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I was like, this, because I'm, I'm such a fan of that. There's this, I think it's like something, How to Survive in Elementary School. It's some kid's show my nephew used to watch. And they would do stuff like that where I was like, oh, this show's genius. You know, my nephew was like five. He's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, this show is so good because they're paying attention to things they did in earlier episodes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That includes our next point of the fourth wall breaking, which is about WandaVision and her reality going haywire, her self-awareness once again breaking the fourth wall. You mentioned it, Ben, exactly. Things, there's continuity there and also references to previous episodes is being, is Mm -hmm. happening very literally. So you see how different items and spaces and furniture and things in her house start going through all the cycles of all the different decades that they had. Point in case, we have Tommy and Billy when they're playing their game. They're initially playing with the Wii, Mm -hmm. and then it scrambles and becomes a GameCube controller. 
which is early 2000s, and then it scrambles and becomes an Atari controller, which is what, like 70s or something? 80s, 80s? 70s, 70s, yeah, really, like late 70s, early, early 80s. Right. Then it scrambles again and becomes Uno cards, which could technically be any Anytime. decade. Yeah. <laughs> Uno is still hot. Uno is still hot and will still cause a fight. Always. To this day. Especially in the black household, just saying. And also at the Uno, the Uno account on Twitter. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all don't know y'all own rules. Yeah, facts. Stacks is allowed. Stacks is allowed, okay? And if you don't know, in the beginning of your Uno game, just ask. What yeah. are the rules? That's all it is. Just ask. <laughs> you know, because, man, I remember when I first went to like, I think it's always your cousins. It's always your always cousins. Always your cousins, yes. Who will ruin you because they always got some rules you ain't got. <laughs> and you go over their crib. I remember they were doing that stat shit. I was like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> no, st- I've always played stacks. But see, that's what I'm saying. I've been, you know, Uno, when I was coming up, you know, this still early Uno before you, you know. So, you know, stacks, you know, by then everyone was adding stacks in, you know what I mean? But. It was it was always somebody's cousin who brought stats to the table okay. first, you know. <laughs> and trust me, even to this day, it was probably your older cousin when you was really young. And you just don't remember they had to play you because there's always an older cousin or an uncle. Like I remember this. Play <laughs> you, you got really me. angry. See, see everybody, you see how angry Ben I mean got because of Uno. I'm telling you, I'm not even talking about Uno anymore. No I'm talking about checkers. And this man did this thing. He <laughs> called a butterfly jump. I'd have to show y'all what it was. This is some bullshit. You can't do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about checkers. Anyway, you know, butterfly drop, boy. Black people will f- your head up and rob you in the game, boy. Every time. Uh, I love also, it. the items in the house are cycling <laughs> through the iterations from previous episodes. We have the wall going from the wallpaper, mm-hmm. the changing, the fireplaces changing, TV, couches, stairs, even the milk. Mm. And I actually thought that was a really cool scene to watch the milk change as she, she meaning Wanda, as she picked it up and was pouring it and it was going through its all different iterations. There is also, I noticed, I feel like as the episodes of WandaVision has progressed, there's a presence of more real world items than before. Mm. So like when you look at the products in the fridge, those are actual products. Like before we had like the Koi soap and that changed into Joy. We, we've had a lot of random products that are like, they may draw from real life, but they're not real. They're not real brands. I In the fridge, they were all real brands, mostly, except for the milk. And it's always some Westview brand milk. And it was like almond milk this time. It actually, and it switched from almond milk to real milk to different types of milk to whole milk, et cetera. Yeah. And also in the fridge was the cane sodas the from cane last cola. week. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, cane cola. Yeah, the cane cola, which is named after uh, one of the people who is a production something on this show as well. So that's just, you know, another shout out. But it's also that idea of cane and killing your brother, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it works on multiple levels. Oh, yeah. I got a question for you because I noticed this. I had to go back and watch it and turn on the subtitles. But could you hear the radio announcement? Yes, absolutely. The radio. That's so wild. On the, like, mm-hmm. uh, one thing Disney Plus has just been messing up on general. It says WandaVision. It was glitching a lot like this episode. Like when I watched it one time, the subtitles are huge. And then <laughs> like the Isn't subtitles people watching. And the, yeah, then the subtitles weren't there anymore. And I cannot hear the radio announcement like the last two times I tried to watch it. I had to turn on the subtitles. All right. Well, yeah. I always have closed captions on anyway. Yep. Just watching I usually TV watch the first general. time without it. And then I go back and watch again. Oh, unless yeah. it's messing up the visuals I usually have, mm-hmm. particularly if I'm watching TV shows, I always have closed captions on because it's always, it's always somebody's accent or mm-hmm. someone's mumbling through a line intentionally or otherwise and I'm just not catching it. So I always turn it on just so I can get that. And also sometimes it's funny. Like, You'll see some funny memes online where it says sobs in Spanish or something. Oh like that. yeah, that's like, my that's my favorite. Did you um yeah. this is off topic but still related. Did you know about how the intro previously on WandaVision has changed every time? I thought it had, but talk about that. Okay, I this is something else I got from watching multiple YouTube videos because I did not peep this, but every week Wanda is doing the voice previously on WandaVision. Yeah, that I remember. The very first episode is previously on what well no, that's too much. It's like previously on <laughs> WandaVision. <laughs> she's the very she's very chipper I, and bright. Yeah. It d- dampens with every episode. So now we're at previously on WandaVision. Oh, so it's very subtle change. So and again, her energy is mm. being drained out of her as we've seen up until this episode where now her energy is being completely drained because a shark is snacking on your magic. Ah, 
I like the connection there. Oh yeah, that's that. You know that like a lot of people thought, and I think we even said both ways that it was the people in West for you who are starving. But I'm fully on the train that the shark is speaking directly to Wanda because he is snacking. Like I said last week, or like we said that he is snacking on Yo Magic. Mm, okay. Yeah. And that's why the character and the thing wasted away to a straw last week is because Wanda is being drained of her energy and power to create these kids, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Just like kids drain the energy and power from people. That's a whole other story. Another (laughs) kind of double entendre fourth world breaking is Darcy. When she's talking about how she's been watching WandaVision for the past week, she's Mm -hmm. our stand-in as well. Just like us, she's been watching it. She talks about how she kind of she kind of lightweight wishes she was one of the characters and then now she got pulled into it and she don't think she wanted she just she don't think that was a good idea <laughs> i thought that was cute that's like whatever people ask us that on fall nerds like which you know fictional world would you like to live in no, this no, world no. is mad dangerous yeah, so like, this I world's don't mad dangerous enough fam i don't need dragons you know <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that stress like i don't need it added on you know what i mean <laughs> I, I don't need that stress yeah. As as we speak about stress, this is actually a very good segue. We got to talk about the next major theme, which is depression. Mm. Oh, I and can we absolutely, I know a lot of people can relate. But I can tell you, us personally, we can relate. We actually talk about that on For All Nerds, our main podcast show, and and we also talk about ways to. Not, I don't want to say defeat depression, but ways to to cope, cope and deal and and move forward to progress yeah, through, through it. it. Yeah. Just like, you know, Monica through that wave, you got to keep pushing through that joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought depression was huge in this. And, and, and that's very interesting what you just said about how her voice changes mm, and throughout yeah. each intro. It's because, Ill. yeah, she her energy is getting sapped and all this other stuff. All that works. Also, you can see it as depression setting in. Mm-hmm. She's all and very shiver. Yep. Yeah, the stages and she goes down. So so this this parallels to the four the five stages of depression. And technically, if... if, if, if you could you could you could stretch your arms to make any of these work, but yes. I would say Juan is in the fourth stage of grief. Actually, I, I meant to say the five stages of grief. She's in the she's in the fourth stage right now. The stages are denial one, anger two, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Yep. And which 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 works really well because she was definitely in denial you, in the first episode. Yeah, the first and the next couple episodes she's, so she's still in anger. denial. The first two is probably denial. Then it starts yeah. moving into anger. Then she starts bargaining when she goes outside with Shield and be like, "Just leave me alone," you know. Leave me alone. I actually saw thought she was bargaining a lot with Vision. True, particularly that, true. all that like when they was both raised up with their powers mm-hmm. and she and he was just talking to her like, "Yo, tell me the truth. What's going on?" And she's also like, some "Look, anger there. lots of anger." Yep. And now we're in this episode seven where she's in a state of depression. Mm -hmm. You see that in the way she moves, the way she looks. She has a clear lack of energy. She seems, again, to not be able to control all the shit just reverting all around her, all the different items going in and out of the different decades. She's dressing her house clothes all day. She looks disheveled. (laughs) She mainly wants to sleep and be left the hell alone. Shorty fell asleep in the costume from the night before. Right. Like, and that what well, that usually happens when you drunk or <laughs> you, you went on a binge. We and missed we missed that when she went and tapped that brown after the end of the episode. <laughs> the end she of tapped last that week. brown liquor. Yeah. Oh man, Wanda drinking Henny, yo. Henny. Wow. Uh, somebody I'm draw that, my please. Henny to say. <laughs> she like, we mentioned it before when she talks about intentionally expanding the false world that we created mm-hmm. you you sometimes with depression you start making up world you aren't making up the world around you to just be able to cope and deal with things is Wanda a Pisces uh, <laughs> takes one to no one I know oh Ben Ami's birthday's coming up y'all very yeah. very 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 soon just like Bruce Wayne me and him you know when I found that out the other day, I was like, wow, I, I, I get it now. You know, <laughs> I fully get it. I'm like, oh, shit. Bruce Wayne is a Pisces. Like, man, that is like the realest thing he ever wrote. Wow. Yeah. Uh, repeating that she's fine when she's not. She said it like five times. I'm <laughs> yeah. fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. No, you're not, girl. No. You are going no, through girl. it. No, no. She seems depressed that vision is gone, and she says the brush off thing like, Well, if he doesn't want to be here, there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. She's hurt, <laughs> she's <laughs> down bad, down hurt bad because she wakes up. And what she what's the first thing she does? She reaches over to his pillow to try to fill it. When you have your partner, you try to reach for them, and they're not there. Oh, 
so sad. Her Poor kids thing. know something is up with her, but she doesn't want to deal with them. There is on a TV when she goes downstairs and she changes the twins show uh, video game off. It says uh, the weather report, which is sunny with a chance of clouds. That could be a euphemism for depression. Mm-hmm. It also, it ends up raining for the first time, at least over where Darcy and Vision are. It ends up raining for the first time in Wanda World, which is Westview. Mm-hmm. And um, and again, like I said, it could just have been over with them. Could who who the hell knows? But the fact that it's even happening, it's it's the weather generally never changes in in Westview, and then now all of a sudden there's some wild shit going on. And then finally, in the depression, we have the introduction of a new commercial, which is an anti-depression commercial, and it's very, very gloomy. Oh my god! But it was hilarious. <laughs> I started crying as soon as the commercial started. I was like, this you is ever so look perfect. Look at the real life commercials like that and be laughing at them. Like oh, some of all the stuff the time. they choose all the time because it's always horrific. The side <laughs> effects. It's always like, why? Why would you ever? Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, and, and you know what? The, those are really the main two themes of this episode, depression and and breaking the fourth wall. And However, vision wasting time. And vision wasting time, Lord Jesus, wasting time. However, we're, we're going to, we, even though we're done with themes, we're going to mention both of those again as we talk through the characters because there's lots of references throughout character introductions and new information that we're learning. Mm-hmm. Who's the mm-hmm. everything? It's been Agatha all along. <laughs> I don't know why that's such a bop. Because it is. I love that song. I, I I thought it was cute, but then I, I found myself just like humming it. Like, also oh, the monsters. See, you see how sampling works right there. That you know. No, that, when it's a, a bop, sample. if it's a bop before, it should be a bop now. We're gonna talk a lot about that. Yes. So. We getting into the characters. We we talking about Agnes or her stage name because she's revealing herself as the one true Agatha Harkness. Y'all, we've been talking about this character since episode one. Jump. <laughs> From yeah. Jump about who Agatha Harkness is. Ben, I mean, could you just give a quick debrief again on who Agatha Harkness is in the comics? Yikes. Agatha Harkness is a witch, is a woman who is a... 400 something, maybe even older than that, year old something woman who Mm -hmm. has immense magical powers. She is in Scarlet Witch's life pretty much from early on. She's the one who teaches Scarlet Witch to really use magic. And then Scarlet Witch throws back to her later on when she wants to have her children. And then Agatha Mm -hmm. comes along and basically uh, plays the Bova role where she's a godmother to the twins and helps her raise them, etc., and then when it all goes bad and the twins are revealed as pieces of the soul of Mephisto, Agatha is the one who erases Scarlet Witch's memory and the rest of the world and universe's memory of the twins. That's how powerful she is. Yes. Quite powerful woman. Erases every person's memory in the universe that the twins ever existed. So the twins are just drawn from existence to anyone. Of course, at some point, that spell gets broken. Wanda, Wanda out. figures it out. <laughs> I think at that time, she duns off Agatha if Agatha wasn't dunned off. Because Agatha stays getting dunned off and coming back. That's the thing. Agatha's yeah, Ag- Agatha's worse than Obi-Wan. Agatha's died and come back multiple times. Yeah. She's what, way worse than Obi. And, and, what, and we talked about this. What happens once Wanda finds out? Uh, she goes buck and... First, she creates the world House of M, where mm-hmm. she can have her children. Her father, Magneto, is ruling the world. She... Basically rewrites reality as she's done in the hex yes. on the show. Yes. Then when that world falls apart because people can't accept a perfect world, like in the Matrix, she says, F it, I'm so tired of y'all mutants and all this shit, and says no more mutants and erases the like 99% of the mutants from the face of the MCU. Yes. So basically, Wanda is super powerful and when pushed to the limit will do some extremely wild things. And Extreme. usually Agatha Harkness is somehow involved in pushing her to the limit because Agatha is never, you know, quite right. Yeah. And and yeah. Agatha herself reveals that she's been dragging it this whole time <laughs> when she reveals her true identity because she's been hot, been behind all the weird occurrences and coincidences. She has that dope theme song. And mm. to me, that represented that we're in Agatha's show now. She is now... Technically, we could have always been in it, but I feel like she makes it a point that she's now 
completely in control. That's a question. Next week is the show going to start Agatha all along. I, listen, if it do, I'm going to die laughing. Die laughing. Die laughing. If we've been uh, watching Agatha all along this whole time. There are, besides her, what we just talked about, her comic book character, the fact is that she's a witch. And there's many references to witches. We've seen it a lot back in the Halloween episode. And for her herself to confirm who she is and what kind of power she has, she says a little bit of funny things and does a little thing, does a little weird uh, movements, I would call them, that makes you think, wait a minute, she is a witch. So, for example, she tries to show her birthmark mole mm-hmm. to to both the, the twins and to Wanda. And I never knew this about when you do that. What does that mean, Ben? I mean, when you try to show your birthmark. Well, it's not even showing the birthmark. It's the fact that back in the day when witch hunters used to look for witches, they would say, if you had, all right, first of all, when when women were being accused of being Thank witches. You. Okay, yes. I'm about to say, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, when women were being accused of being witches back in the 1600s, and basically to I'm this day. To day? Yeah, <laughs> to this day. Anything would make you a witch. So a man would come along and be like, that birthmark? Sign of the devil, you're a witch, burn you at the stake. The one that always blows my mind is they would throw women into the water. If you drowned, oh, right. you right. weren't a witch. If you floated, you, floated. you were a witch, and they burned <laughs> you at the stake. <laughs> so it's like you die. If you die, you die because you're yeah. going to die. If he die, if, if she, she dies, dies, she dies. dies. You know? Yeah. Um. So she tries to show her birthmark to her, which is one of those, you know, call outs. And this is a quick reference uh, that's not in the show, but in the movie Pulp Fiction, Marcellus Wallace, um, Ving Rhames, the big black man, when he's first introduced, we get a shot of the back of his neck, and there's a Band-Aid on the back of his neck. He had, he sends Bruce Willis and Samuel Earl, whatever, whoever, uh, no, not Bruce and Samuel, Bruce sorry. Bruce Willis. No, Bruce is in it, and he's involved oh, in I that forgot, scene. I keep forgetting he's in that movie. But, um, yeah, but he sends Samuel and John Travolta after the briefcase. Which, when they open it, glows. And the key lot to it seems to be 666. One of the theories is that the devil sucked his soul out of the hole in the back of his neck, which is why he has a band-aid there, and his soul is in that briefcase. Wow. Which is why he's going through anything. And that's why he wants that shit so bad. Badly. Because it's his soul, obviously. Yep. That's one of the theories. You know, I don't think Quentin ever said that, but that's something that he's like, okay, that works, you know, with everything (laughs) that I've done. Because... The thing on the back of his neck is actually just because he had a shaving accident or some shit like that, I think. Okay. But um, Okay, so so I, I recognize the witchy slash evil tendencies there. Yeah, so it's okay. the same thing with birthmarks. You know, that's where they say the devil, a um, Mephisto or whatever, would have taken their soul out. Wow. Yeah. When Agatha is in the her confessional, she also gets a confessional, she says she bit a kid once. Can we talk about <laughs> Catherine Han and, and this woman's acting? Yeah. Catherine Hahn is, oh. is is a goat. She she's she's a, she's or if she's if she's not already a goat, she's becoming a goat because so many subtle, like, so many subtle things. And and I I love her role in this because you can tell she loves playing loves this it. character. She enjoys her job. Yeah, like in that in that line, you know, when she says, "I, I bit a kid once." And you she know, says it with with the like a sweet smile, and then also there's so then many the different. Then the darkness comes in, it's yeah. Sinister, like it's yeah. sinister, and it's it's like you're not. Is she being serious or is she playing? And, and that then, takes that that takes acting chops to do. <laughs> and, and, and like the, even in the Agatha all along, when she's wiping her eyes for vision, and it turns back to the camera and gives this sneer, yeah, and then turns back to vision, yeah, like like she's like oh, I'm messing with this. Once again, I don't have the woman's name on it, but it's a woman who is the casting director for the MCU, and she is responsible for everything. Like, that's just all there is to it, because, Mm -hmm. you know, like, it's just nothing but gold mine she finds. Like, uh, watching the YouTube clips, I keep seeing that clip of Norm screaming about the pain, and then, so tell me about it. And it is just incredible. Incredible acting. Like Norm in that scene is Norm like, is good. Oh my God. I can't believe how good he is. And yes, Catherine is killing it. Um, one line that I love she says is that Ralph says I sugarcoat things, right? Mm-hmm. This woman steals kids, um, is, you know, has done the rest of this terrible stuff, but she still says that Ralph says that she sugarcoats things. So Ralph who's, is worse than really her. Who really is Ralph? That's the other thing. Because we never Mephisto. see him, remember? Look, we've been, I've been calling this for a long... I mean, actually, I called Dottie. You called Dottie Mephisto. Mephisto. 
And Dottie's nowhere to be found. But it's Dottie Ralph. And Dottie does show up in this episode for the first time in a long time. Could be. As we mentioned, she, she says this line about she did, <laughs> she actually did bite a kid once. Mm-hmm. And what you said about her sugarcoating things, and I, and I put the two and two together and thought, mm. wait a minute, witches eat kids if you're talking mm. about fairy tales like Hansel and Gretel. Facts. And so, they try and eat them with the sugar. There Sweeten them up. There it is. We also with Agatha, we get confirmation, you mentioned it, that she was faking being in that mental fog when Vision found her on Halloween night. We both said that. We said, I, said, said I, don't, I don't think she she being facts. I don't think she being Mm-mm. valid. And she was faking. Her license plate on her car was from Connecticut, uh, somewhere the birthplace of witches. Not Salem? Not from Jersey. Yep. Or oh, wow. no, not Salem. Oh, yeah. Salem, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. Salem, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. That's it. Yep. Okay, not from okay. Jersey. Which, yeah. Another one. Oh, okay. Another one. It's confirmed that, and again, this could be construed a couple of ways, but that she conjured up Pietro. Now, here's the thing. You see Pietro and you see the, her purple magic, funky magic going on behind him. Did she conjure him up, meaning she just made him out of the blue? Did she physically pull him out of the Fox X-Men universe and put him here to cause havoc? Or is what? he just some dude? Or is he, or is he right? Is he just some... some <laughs> henchman that she just found wherever the hell she found these people and just placed him as Pietro. Is he playing a dude playing another dude? <laughs> I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. I don't stop to the <laughs> what do you say to the DVD extras. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Oh, oh god, Robert Donnie. Oh, so good. Also, Agatha, Agatha says uh, when Wanda's in a confessional, she says do you think that maybe this is what you deserve? Wanda is Oof. is is telling her story, and I don't want to say complaints because that's to me too, too harsh. But she's you know she's having her complaints and her her grievances about mm-hmm. what's happening. And Ag- Agatha, we find out later, said that wild shit. Do you think that maybe this is what you deserve? Because I was like, first of all, why are you victim blaming? First of all, yeah. Why are you victim blaming? Um, and and you know. Wanda's asking them while asking this why every why everything is falling apart around her. Mm-hmm. It was Agatha. There are a few things also that speak towards the whole hellish, devilish nature. <laughs> a few, a few things uh, between <laughs> between Agatha and, and and potentially Mephisto. You saw. I thought it was a fly, but you you corrected me. Uh, yes. There's a different kind of insect that's on that window curtain in Agatha's house. A cicada, which mm. is also known as. I found this out very recently and. Yeah, we did talk about this on Lovecraft Country. We talked about this on Lovecraft Country. Yeah, on Safe Negro Pod. For those who love Lovecraft Country, make sure you check out the Safe Negro Pod, another one of our podcasts where we do the same deep diving into every episode of Lovecraft Country. But yes, I did talk about this because this is when I found this out, that cicadas are, locusts and cicadas are basically the same inset. So cicadas are when they just chilling, doing their thing, whatever, one-on-one. But then when a bunch of the muds get together, they become <laughs> locusts. And that's when they become a problem is when, you know, there's a swarm of locusts. Gotcha. And them things will eat and destroy everything. Right. Yeah. So there's at least one in town. But cicadas are also usually known with rebirth and resurrection. And speaking of rebirth and resurrection, and I've not seen anyone mention this yet, so I do not want to forget it. When they were in the circus scene... There is a woman riding around on a, unicer- on a unicycle in a costume that really looks like Dark Phoenix. And I'm just not understanding why anyone has not said this. You're because right. to me, it looked like a clear shout out to Dark Phoenix. Rebirth, it's red she's and gold, a phoenix. Which I can is see phoenix, it. rebirth, and resurrection. Also, the uh, storyline in the comments when Wanda first went bad was a direct homage done by John Byrne, who was the plotter and artist on the original Dark Phoenix storyline. So when he first turned Wanda evil, he was directly referencing his own storyline. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, wow. We yeah. also saw... I can't that- believe that in every YouTube video, I did. no one mentioned this woman riding on a unicycle in this like, Dark Phoenix-looking ass costume. We also saw, the again, her rabbits in your scratchy which we saw, we've said since, what, episode one or two, whenever she mentioned him, that is a, or could be a reference to, in the comics, Agatha has a son named Nicholas Scratch. Yep, and also the devil is commonly referred to as Nick, uh, Old Nick and Scratch, Old Nick, Scratch, Scratch, all those, you know, combination of those words. 
And if none of those were clues of of her dark, uh, her dark domain uh, cadence or her dark domain, we have magic imbued in the roots that envelop the basement. You see that like that. I want to call it purple chaos magic, but you see that mm. that perp, that purple, that purple, and that's that, really interesting because yeah. purple is usually referenced with power, with the power stone. So is she, mm. you know, is she that power? Is it like, is it like a blue flame? You know what I mean? Like when you get to orange flame, you know, and now we at the blue flame level, you know, when, when yeah, she had that purple power. Yeah. Like that chaos magic is cool, but I got that perp magic over here. The purple power. Right I mean, now. I, you know, I'm always a fan of that purple. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> it also, her lair is very interesting. I, I call mm-hmm. it her lair. That, that, that section of the basement mm. that seems to connect between her house in Westview and this other place. The reason why I say this has to be another place, because if you pay attention, and it's happened twice in this episode, but if you pay mm-hmm. attention, it's in, including the, the audio cues, the aspect ratio of the scene shifts. Mm-hmm. It shifts from that cinematic letterbox. Yep. Uh, it shifts to a cinematic letterbox. Before yep. it's like in the in the TV four by three, I believe. Yes. Then it goes down to where like the, the sixteen and I say, by nine. Sixteen by nine. And when I say ratio, I mean the shape mm-hmm. of of the actual thing that you're watching, the the, the actual visuals that you're watching. Yep. That might indicate that they're technically in a different place, separate from the hex, or in a place protected from the effects of the hex. Yes, and also it's what what it indicates really is that whenever we see this letterbox shift, whenever we see it shift to letterbox, that's the viewpoint of any MCU. So that's basically the MCU reality is sixteen by nine, mm-hmm. while the one division reality is four by three television old school. So whenever you see that shift, you're in the MCU reality. That's why we saw it earlier when we saw Hayward, Wayward Hayward, when we see Monica and them. You know, Monica and them, it's all it's always sixteen by nine in the real world or the MCU real world, as it were. Right, right. I still want to be Hayward's ass. I'm, that's an aside. Uh, don't talk I about think nobody's somebody mama. Gonna get a chance next episode, boy. I, My man I got so. plans. Don't talk about nobody's mama. Uh, going back to Agatha, it's a lot. It's a lot of white people talking to black people. Real wild on this series. We are gonna talk about that. I gonna get your teeth punching. I'm just yeah. like, oh, no. also with Agatha, she may have taken Billy and Tommy away from Window, which is akin. Mm. Winda from Wanda. Winda, yeah. <laughs> Which is akin to what? Get away from that window. The window. <laughs> Let me finish my sentence, Jerome. <laughs> I cannot finish a sentence without him interjecting some joke. It's funny. <laughs> Get away from that window now. <laughs> but she may, akin to what we've said happens in the comics, she may have taken Billy and Tommy away from Wanda because she, they come over, they have their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Which is actually mentioned during the radio broadcast, or, or it's actually said before, like a few scenes earlier, about kids eating peanut butter and jelly. But they're eating it. You see just the, the little pieces, and Wanda's like, where are my kids at? Also on that radio broadcast, that we didn't really point this out, is the fact that he mentions that, you know, all the kids only come out for one night a year here. Yeah. <laughs> so the kids are back asleep, wherever she's been fridging them. Yeah. That's where they are. Oh, but damn. Not yeah, the fridge. yeah, yeah. Yikes. Yep. Yeah. She's fridging them. Izzy, uh, Izzy, did. <laughs> <laughs> I get to make that Wu Tang reference every time. I love it. Uh, what do you mean, Izzy, did? Laying there with the fucking newborn baby. Izzy, Izzy, did. I liked the <laughs> set of this lair Oof. because it, it it's some interesting things on the walls. Mm-hmm. She has cabin, which is which is brew type shit sitting in the cabinet. You yep. see these what bones. I believe are incantations or symbols and bones on the walls themselves. Or like they're like sconces or something that have these symbols on it and then there's one point where the camera lingers for a long time and it sits on a book which seems to be expelling some type of dark energy yes couple of things about that you also mentioned but i also want to point out uh one listener hit me on twitter the other day and believed that a character in mortis is behind everything because this person just finished watching the x-men animated series arc with a mortis and now they're a mortis fan and I was like, you out your mind. And then I watched this episode, right? <laughs> and some of those little gold symbols on the columns at yeah. the top resembled Immortus's symbol. And I was like, oh my God, if oh, it is Immortus, I, mean, I have to admit this. No, I, I no, resembled. I don't think okay. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do not think so at all. But for a second, I was like, if it's Immortus and this, you know, dude is right, I would be really like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Because when, when they hit me, I was like, you're right, bam. 
No way. But anyway, there's the gold symbols. Uh, more prominent or important is the fact that we do see the cicada again. All right. This is once again, again? I got this from YouTube. Yeah, because I did not see this. But on the very first column to the left, when she walks in, the cicada is right there. Oh. Behind everything, I did peep this without any YouTube. Behind everything in the back, there is a skull with horns, like a ram's horns, that resembles the demon or you know devil Bahamut, or the devil as most people know him, you know ram's horns, etc. All that. So that's hanging in the back. Now to the most important piece of the workshop, <laughs> of the witch's workshop, is the book. Yeah. All right. A couple theories on what this book is. Um, first one is that the book is the Druid Tome from Marvel Comics. The Druid Tome, as you hear, is, relates to Druids. There's a bunch of spells in it. This character, um, the Druid, you know, the one, there was one Druid, was trying to get it to get this god, Sam Hain, to come back. Okay. Sam Hain comes into conflict with Wanda and Vision in their first series. He is a bullheaded or goat-headed god, all right? So, could be him. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Could be. I also know from my understanding of mythology that Sam mm-hmm. Hain is another, or it's one of the holidays that yes. Halloween draws from. Yep. It's a Gaelic, Nordic, Irish, Irish type of holiday, or, or Druic holiday that you say, that, that deals with... Does it deal with like death and all that other stuff, or yeah. just darkness spreading yeah, all, like type all of that, stuff? All that type of like stuff. Like how they be dancing around fires and all that. So. It's usually used as like a stand-in for like Satan's holiday or for like witches oh. where they get their power, etc. Because in the Marvel comics, okay. uh, Sam Hain, the god, I think they he they they even use the Sam Hain holiday, but like there's the Salem Seven, and they're all coming around. I think they were trying to bring Sam Hain back at that point. So it could be because Sam Hain does in the Marvel comics does have a lot of relations with Agatha, with Scarlet Witch. I just think it'd be kind of a letdown for Sam Hain right now because okay. the other one that it that it possibly could be is the Darkhold. A lot of people might know the Darkhold from Agents of Shield because it turned up in there. It looks definitely different. The version that was in Agents of Shield, which is probably not canon to the MCU anyway. Is looks different, but the dark hold has a long history in the comic books and relates to you know, a lot of people have tried to get their hands on it. It's a spell of, I mean, it's this book of evil spells, and it most prominently relates to this demon, Cathon, who I feel like we mentioned on an early episode, but we probably haven't talked too much about him because I really didn't think they were leaning this way. I'm still leaning for Mephisto because Mephisto also has relations to the dark hold. But Cthon is the one who created the Dark Old in the past. He is like Marvel's version of a Lovecraft monster, going back to Safe Negro Pot again. Okay. He is a older god. You know, he's from the create beginning of time type thing. And he mm. basically at the beginning was a good thing and then got crea- uh, converted as he started studying black magic and became the first black magic user or dark magic user. Because I hate the word black magic. Black, me you too. know why they call it black magic, folks. <laughs> Dark I don't magic. need to explain that when you're talking to two black people. <laughs> Just say dark magic. Dark magic, which still doesn't work that well, but whatever. All right. <laughs> Cthon, so Cthon has a lot of relations with uh, Wanda because he is trapped in this mountain, Mount Wondagore, where Wanda basically was raised by Bofa Bova, Bova the animal cow woman. Yes. Oh, God. It's always just so weird. Who is Ray, who was created by the high evolutionary, a right. person who believed in evolution and evolved a bunch of animals to be animal men so that they, they could eventually fight Cthon. They're anthropomorphic animals. Anthropomorphic animals. So why did, that's the part that always bugs me out. Why does man why? thought a bunch of animal men could fight <laughs> off a demon? I don't why, know. Why did that one dude want to change everybody into dinosaurs on that side? <laughs> <Yeah, Spider-Man> <laughs> like, <laughs> just because. Because they can. So he, Cthon, it has a lot of relation to the Darkhold and to Wanda. So that is another possibility. I'm still leaning on it being Mephisto. And maybe it's not the Darkhold. I think it might just be a book that is has Mephisto or whatever locked in it. Because it has that orange, fiery, demonic looking type of, you know, energy coming up off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
The last and, one. Yeah, this last book I was going to say. Let's talk about that. Yeah, the book of Calistro. I don't know. Calistro? Calistro. Yeah, I, I think let's go with that. Calistro is actually mentioned in, and actually comes up in the Doctor Strange movie, in the first Doctor Strange movie. That's the book that is stolen off of that wall of books oh, where all wait, who of the stole books. It? Huh? Who stole it? Uh, whatever the villain's name, you know, I can't remember my oh, mother's name. The white dude. Yeah, the white dude with the bad eyes. He the, stole that joint. The one from the that looked like the Ghostbusters villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he stole the joint because he was trying to bring back uh, Dormammu, who is right, the right, right, yeah, okay. big evil, yet another big giant fiery demon in mm-hmm. Marvel universe, and he was trying to bring him out. You know, we all know how that worked out. One thing about that though, all the books in Doctor Strange's study where the book was stolen from are in hexes. Aha! Aha! Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will so, remember that. Um, I didn't either. Once again, that came up when I was doing my research. Uh, I'm leaning on none of them, though. I'm still, like I said, I lean, <laughs> on, I lean on none of them and it being the book that it's just holding Mephisto or Darkhold that is holding Mephisto. But that's okay. just because I want to see Mephisto. I'm going to go with that. Yep. I'm going to go with that as well. Cthulhu would be cool too, though. That motherfucker bad. Mm-hmm. You know, so we'll see. Let's get into what I believe is, is the other star, maybe even the real star. The legendary Captain Monica Rambo, a.k.a. You want to do the honors? Lieutenant Trouble, a.k.a. Spectrum, a.k.a. Yo. Photon, Yo. a.k.a. Auntie Monica. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. AKA one of the baddest of the bad. <laughs> Spectrum has been born, y'all. Mm. We have witnessed. Is this the, well, it's not the first time, but at least on TV. Is this the first time we've witnessed the birth of a, of a superpower superhero? Not just someone who could flip and, and do tricks and shoot guns, but I mean someone who has mystical type powers. It, it's interesting because Marvel really avoided uh, origin stories. Yeah. You know, for the most part. I mean, we see Doctor Strange's, you yeah. know, so yeah. But in but, TV. Hmm? I said, but in TV, have we seen this? Like, I don't, I don't, with Oh, you like, mean like Luke Cage and all them? Yeah. I mean, those don't count. Okay. They, 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 <laughs> I mean, the fools barely have count. powers. I mean, That's like, what I'm saying. That's what yeah, I'm saying. But we, know, we don't see any of them, like, no. Okay. And also, I mean, even if we did, could it compare? I don't think it can compare. Because, <laughs> oh my God. Monica that was has, heartbreaking. Monica has, as Darcy warned before, she said, you, your cells have already been changed twice due to all the different times you've gone through the hex and you've been changed on a molecular level. If you go through again, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Monica says, you right and goes through it for the third time. <laughs> Which I, which uh, it's is in literary terms is also a reference to a hex. Like you, when you say things three times, you know it's mm. like it's a magical kind of spell. Uh, and when she appears on the other side of Westview, she has. Y'all powers. know about the Candy Man. Yeah. Now we got to talk about that, and not, and I don't want to gloss this over. We got to talk about that scene of her passing through from. Oh my um, God! No, from we the can't main, gloss over. From the main reality to Wandavision reality to Westview, because that scene was. It reminded me of Hippo. We keep talking about Lovecraft Country. It reminded me mm. of Hippolyta, mm. of going through the dimensions of all the, the multiverse. Mm. And that energy, in essence, could also be a multiverse, right? Mm-hmm. That could, that's one of the barriers of the multiverse itself. It has all that kinetic and chaos energy and, and cosmic energy and radiation and everything mm-hmm. else mixed into this soup of, of, of I don't know, superhero juice. Yeah. Um, when she goes through that, uh, to me, this also speaks to the whole fourth wall breaking theme because when she, as she walks through the barrier, you see what appears to be a split of four different iterations of her. Mm-hmm. You see that 60s version of Monica when she was in the hex before. She see the 70s version of her. You see Monica when she first returned from the blip when she was in the hospital. You saw that outfit she was wearing and then her current self in that space suit. Mm-hmm. And nice. during that scene, you see or you hear major memories coalescing and, and being spoken out loud, including convos she's had when she was a kid, and uh, conversations with her mother Maria, Nick Fury, Carol Danvers, i.e. Captain Marvel, and Dr. Harley, which mm. is the doctor that she met up with when she came back on the blip. Yeah. Um, this scene was heartbreaking for me. And, and like Monica's whole arc through this whole series has been heartbreaking for me because like, I'm still going through the loss of my mother and 
Like when she was walking through that scene, I called out mom, you know, as soon as I heard Maria's voice, you know what I mean? Cause it was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I just know that feeling, you know, like, and then later on when she talked about going through the worst tragedy she could ever go through, you know, she's already done it and she can't change it and there's nothing you could do about it. I just, mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. It, it's like, a lot. It's, yeah, it's, it's it was a lot. a lot for me watching this episode. And I, I mean, I just, at the same time, I've, I've, you know, done the work, I've done therapy, I've, you know, done a lot of things where I could appreciate it more than it hurt me, you know, more where I was like, oh my God, that, you know, like, I understand, I I feel that. And and I felt like she as an actress delivered it, you know, delivered what that feeling is. Yeah, I mean, and going through the pain, as you know, when people say when they, even though she, she seems impervious to it now, when people go through the hex, they, they experience so much pain and mm-hmm. anguish. And, and it's really, it's really Wanda's pain and anguish, but the fact that they have to experience it within themselves and in a way they're in their own personal health. Yeah. And it was also there. It's more like it, it's Wanda's pain and anguish that is being influenced on you. But as we see in here, it's their pain and anguish that they're mm-hmm. hearing. Mm-hmm. They're not hearing about Wanda's problems. Yeah. You know, um, also really cool. And, and, and in a way her, the outfit that Monica is wearing when she gets back on the other side to Westview, it resembles her comic book costume. Oh, that was so beautiful. Like, the, so, as, like I said, as a yeah. kid who grew up on her, when she pulled off that suit and started running and I got it, I was just like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. And, and, and in general, the costuming on this show is always indicative of that character. You see when, when Billy and Tommy, they're mm-hmm. constantly wearing their colors yep. of some sort of their, of their comic book costumes, the way Agatha dresses, the, obviously with Vision and everyone else, like every, at least the ones that have direct ties to the comics, you see that they are still influenced by that version of themselves. Yeah, that which was is, great. Which is another mention of breaking the fourth wall. That was so good, man. I was just like, you know, because I was like, oh, because... I'd seen previews, you know, little clips of that suit. And so I was like, okay, they're going to do it somehow. But when she pulled off the outer layer and, you know, it's got the Captain Marvel, the Spectrum suit on, I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, oh, she still so says she, now on the show, it still has the shield Sword, symbol. the sword. Excuse me, sword, sword. symbol. I keep yep. doing that. The sword but we'll see how long that lasts. You she's she's going to take, right yeah. take that shit off. because Take that shit right off. She's going to take that shit right off. Speaking of the comics, we got to talk a little bit about her powers in the comics. Um, OP. And, and, very another OP character, um, and and this is this is what I'm reading right now is actually an excerpt. This is a uh, due to the bombardment by extra dimensional energies. Monica can transform herself into any form of energy within the electromagnetic spectrum. Spectrum, guys. Among the many forms of energy, she is assumed and able to control gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet radiation, visible light, electricity, and uh, she has energy duplication powers energy absorption powers and hypercosmic awareness, meaning she's aware of, she could be in multi dimensions and verses and, and, and she knows what's going on and, and, and has full control over herself. Let me uh, say, I just finished reading the ultimates by Al Ewing. And if you want to see Monica being you is because I've been reading her since I was a kid and the stuff Al Ewing was doing with this, with the idea of her makes her even more OP. Like he basically says that, when she's assuming human form, she says it. She's like, when I assume human form, it feels like I'm powering down. Like, basically, her body, like they said in this, is no longer, it's energy that is assuming the form of a human. Like, the mm-hmm. energy is becoming blood, all that other things that make up a human. Yeah. So, it's like the vibration. And that's why she's hypercosmically aware, because she's not yeah. hearing or seeing on a traditional sense anymore. One thing I wonder if she's going to do is in the comics, because of that energy duplication power, she's actually able to assume the form of any other person. Yeah, she uh, she can turn invisible. And and then I think, I mean, the ultimate's ended. But what he's really getting at is that not only could she assume the form, she could make her body into anything she wanted. She could grow 30 feet, you know, 100 feet, because it's just light assuming that form. Yeah. So, you know, she could do whatever. I mean, she's really OP. And I don't know how far they're going to go with her in the show, but I know that they can't stim on it either, you know, because yeah, yeah. people would be so upset if they just give her, yeah. oh, now she can see things. Like, yeah, you know. yeah. And, and the reason why I refer to her under her Spectrum name is mm-hmm. it's technically right now, currently her character is named as Spectrum, but also when you look at it from a very little perspective, when she gets out, she can see a spectrum of energy in front mm-hmm. of her. She can see how the energy is emanating from the power lines, from the, the dark energy within the roots around Agatha's house. She sees it all. And then she has 
that uh, she has like these these this bluish thing going on with her eyes now. Yep. Fire. Um, fire. It's just, I mean, it, it it was very well done. Like you said, it it was <sighs> also very deep because when you liken it to your own personal your own personal life and what you may be going through and and the fact that she makes it through to the other side Mm -hmm. that's what we keep saying like it's it's an ongoing battle but you will make it you keep going forward keep pushing yep um i during that scene of monica well first of all i i laughed because i'm like they made such a big deal about her getting this random vehicle this and as they call it a heavy armored space rover as major goodner says and they're like oh yeah oh we got this we got this she's and they say major goodner says she's gonna sail right through unharmed which was obviously foreshadowed because as soon as Holmes said that i said as homegirl said that i said that's not happening and what do we see the rover slam into the damn <laughs> barrier and imme- almost immediately start getting to re- be rewritten can we talk about Major Goodner real quick and yeah. you know talk about anticipation and uh mm-hmm. um I one Tiona has said that the aerospace engineer is one of her favorite moments, you know. Now, was Major Goodner the aerospace engineer? If she was, was Tiona just was playing like, the, that like was you know, a like letdown. you know, just yeah, playing y'all out because we all yeah. predicted, you know, Blue Marvel, we predicted Hank McCoy, we predicted uh Reed Richards, we predict the all kind of people. Yeah. Major Goodner. Yeah. That's all we well, got. That's Kevin Fahey, you know, being rude. Yeah. Because he knew we was going to say all that. He was like, not today. And I also <laughs> like it because I think that would have taken away from Monica and from Wanda and from Vision, which is what this show is about, you know. This is true. Yeah. This, that's that's very true. Um, you said that you, you mentioned a good uh Wanda versus Monica episode i guess or or a point in this oh, episode that, that's more i want to you know i mean like we were talking about before you know that scene broke my heart but you know what when wanda's like you know you're always lying to me and monica's like the only lies i told you are the one you put in my mouth mm. like there's so much subtext to this you know we have a black woman on the street surrounded by white people being accused of being a liar <laughs> you know wanda with the straight up you know point the finger at white woman like no, Karen, you know, calling her a Karen. Calling her a Karen. Calling her Wanda and Karen. definitely calling your girl a Karen. Definitely calling <laughs> Agatha a Karen. Agatha all along been a Karen boy. Been it's been Karen through the whole series. But um, so yeah, we have this really tense scene where you have her screaming on her and then her telling her, "Don't let him make you the villain." Right. And Wanda, don't let him. You know, is it Hayward? Is it Mephisto? Well, it since it came from Monica's mouth and this version of Monica, I'm I'm thinking she means Hayward. Yes, but it's the show saying, you know, mm. and also it's also that fourth wall, like once again, fourth wall breaking. You know, don't let them make you the villain. And then she's like, maybe I already am, like foreshadowing, because maybe she's not the villain now, but maybe she will be the villain later on. She's definitely the villain in a lot of people's eyes right now. Facts. The people who who are trapped in the hex right now, if they're even referring to her when they say she's making me feel pain, all this stuff. Like, mm. they looking at her dead ass like she's the villain. Yep. And even if she isn't the one, like I said, she is still complicit in some way. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, even if she ain't making everybody feel pain, she still got them here in the first place. Even yeah. if that wasn't her original intention, like I keep saying. I don't think that was. I think the Westview, everything else just comes of this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, going back to the earlier episodes, I think that's Agatha showing her the vision of dead vision of dead Pietro. Because both times, mm, right. those, like that. we said, those were to keep her here. Stay here. Have these fucking kids. Don't worry about anything else. Because if you go out of here, dead husband, dead brother. That's what you get when you go out of Ooh, here. Ouch. Yeah. Speaking of the dead brother, Pietro, it's confirmed by Wanda or to her acknowledge that that's not really him. Mm. And she tells the boys, that is not your uncle. Do not. I don't know this man. <laughs> Wouldn't know a thing. <laughs> You know, she Kiki Palmered him. Like, I, I'm sorry, y'all. Sorry to this man. <laughs> I don't. I don't so know if, if that's Did not Mariah Carey, I don't right. know her. So if he's not Pietro, who is he? I mentioned, I asked earlier, is this, this is this truly Pietro from Fox Universe and Agatha just brought him over? Just a F with Wanda. Is he Nightmare? Is mm. he Mephisto? Is he just a minion? And we asked that earlier, you know, well, if, well, if he is Mephisto, then who the hell is Dottie? Or was that just like a one-time... Hip, hip, you know, thought we had like what's who is Pietro? 
Speaking of Nightmare, we mentioned Nightmare last week for a quick minute. The funniest YouTube thing I saw this week was a thumbnail where somebody had te- taken the artist. I've seen an artist rendition of Mephisto already, and they've just taken it and switched the colors up to make it Nightmare. Like they've made it green and white. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, come was, on. You didn't do a lot of work there. Nah. <laughs> no work done there. Um, I'm going with Rando. But He's a actually, Rando. Okay. Only because his voice in the mid credit scene once again had lost that accent. You know, he does not see his natural um, voice does not seem to be Pietro. You know, his what natural mean? voice. Like when he, he had when, that he had that attitude and that that type of he made moves like that in the Fox show, uh, in the Fox movies. So. But his voice is different. Like look at go back and watch it. Evan Peters is that type of actor too, where his voice, you know, is like watch his voice. Just if you go and watch him, I don't even watch it that much but people talk about you know how good he is with every accent he's ever done and how mm-hmm. he's such a chameleon so the fox twitchover is different than that guy who is talking to wanda the guy who's talking to wanda is older tired you know mm. so he's, he's a, washed oh shit yeah but it's not just like that it's twitchover wash it's a different person when he's like how did you do all this and all that that's not that quitsilver from you know the quitsilver from the fox movies is hyperactive Always, you know, you know, he he's never been that on this show. Hmm. He's been the Jersey boy, or he's been, you know, this like really dark, really, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, no, he got like, hyper when he was smashing the pumpkins with the twins and stuff, and going true, off but that's playing Halloween. the role, and that was also because he wanted to encourage the twins to use their powers. True, you know, so that was also him playing the role of being Pietro. But when he's hmm. when he's real, like. A uh, Fox Twitchover is never going to be like, you're dead, bro. You know, don't worry about it. it ain't like he you're would dead. Never say, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that. Yeah. That's somebody else. Mm. And even his the line at the end, the uh, Snoop Strunk of Snoop, is that's somebody else. Mm. Mm-hmm. The next and, person. And what's name's an actor? That motherfucker's he, an actor. Oh, yeah. He, he, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that motherfucker's an actor. Talking about Evan Peters. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker's an actor. Yeah, yeah. Hope he sits around somehow in the MCU because, yeah. He has to, because yeah. I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, you had a question about Dottie. I, I said to her, like, where is she? You know, I mean, she shows up at the very, you know, during that white woman versus black woman scene. Dottie is there looking over like, hmm. Uh, I don't, listen, I, I, from the beginning, and I, I don't know why I never said it, you know, many episodes ago, but a lot of people said it after the fact that I thought she was Emma Frost, because she was giving me big mm-hmm. Emma Frost vibes. Oh, we talked about that. We I, I mentioned that on one of these yeah. episodes. Yeah, so. But that's yeah. definitely been mentioned. I, I'm, I'm not going for Emma, but we do know that Dottie's role is important. It could yeah. be Emma, but it would be a, we got two episodes left, dog. You know, like and bringing in like they got a lot to do already. Bringing in mutants on top of that might be tall, but these writers, <laughs> we'll see. And and also, I think everyone has to remember that even though this show will answer some questions it's going to introduce even more because yeah. this show leads in to the falcon and winter soldier and that leads and all of these shows are sides or or, or supporting stories into the movies mm-hmm. and, and the pieces movies of support, a bigger puzzle and, and the movies support the shows and as mm-hmm. ben Ami says pieces of the bigger puzzle so all of our questions are not going to be answered if anything we're just going to get more questions yes but they do you know the creators everyone involved has been assuring people that the ending is not only very satisfying. emotionally satisfying but it's also a satisfying story in its own right okay. well they got two more so they they got to keep it yo i i'm i'm excited for what i'm we're excited and we and we got like i think we are leaning on like a hour and a half long episode for the final episode like a whole movie oh, okay let's see i'm hoping i'm hoping let's- that's what we get Let's see. Um, I'll be up all damn night, boy. I don't <laughs> someone, care. someone who hadn't done much this episode, Vision. Oof. This oh. man has not been doing much. Uh, he believes Wanda has been creating impediments to stop him from returning home. Mm-hmm. We see that when, for some reason, he's sitting in the car with Darcy. Well, excuse me, in the what the funnel cake mobile. Yes. Uh, they're at a stoplight, which why would you stop at a stoplight if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody to stop you? Like, that's just my thing. You got someplace to be. You're basically driving through the cornfields. There's no cops. There's no nobody. There's no traffic. Why are you stopping at the stoplight for? But that's that also the movies. You know, they always do that when they stop at the stoplight. There's no one there. And then they start going and suddenly, you know, there's 100 people there. If I'm that's, a t- yeah. If there's one thing I'm going to do 
Tatiana's gonna go through the stoplight if you in the sticks, okay? I'm not stopping. Facts. But that's what they did. So they do that, and then you see this crew show up and block their path to fix the stoplight. Then when they think they're ready to go again, the crossing guard shows up and the kids make another appearance. And then, of course, you have these confessional breaks that seem to happen as Vision is sitting in this car, wasting a lot of time. Well, I don't want to say completely wasting time because he also is still getting information about his past life from Darcy. Darcy explains to him as they meet up, explains to him everything that's happened to him from uh, Infinity War through Endgame and now. Okay, this is my problem with this, and um, we've talked about this as writers. I feel like, and I get it for this episode because this is supposed to be a Wanda and Monica-centered episode, but all that information the audience knows already. You know, Now, there are a small portion of the population who is watching WandaVision without having seen the MCU before this, so they need catching up. I think but, it's a bigger population than you think. Like, we feel like it's small because this is the world we're in. Okay, regardless right regardless <laughs> of that fact we are now on the seventh episode you own disney plus right if you are watching this and if you're bootlegging then we shouldn't be writing for you anyway but <laughs> you know we're writing for people who own disney plus on the seventh episode now like it's not that big a deal and to go back and watch these my problem is that i feel like that's just not the best writing just to have a character i think it's carried by paul bettany you know i think he's such an incredible actor that he carries this not great writing because he's like reacting to it, you know, and the reactions are so powerful. But I do feel like his arc in this episode is tied up on nothing, but that might be a fourth wall thing again, because the thing starts with it being Wanda, 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 you know, vision. Yeah. So yeah. Like he's an also ran at this point. Perhaps Even that's as the point. Darcy asked Darcy, what am I now? Mm-hmm. When when Darcy explained, as we kept saying, Vision done died three fucking times at this point. And it's just like, well, before first I was a manifestation of Jarvis. And then now my corporeal form is his physical form. It was from Ultron. So what the hell am I now? And something about Vision is he is constantly worried about other people, which leads me to think he is not going to survive this series. He almost died an episode ago. Yeah. And even when he was dying, he was like, save the people. He's yeah. not worried about yeah. himself. Yeah. And he's even never, here, he's, he's asking about his kids. Yeah. About himself. I, I do not see Vision surviving in this series, and it hurts me. Ooh. It really hurts That's me. if he's... T- I mean, when we see him, he's breaking apart outside of the hex, so does that mean he's not even really alive? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. He's, so he's never not been dead? <sighs> Ooh. Hurts. Yeah. And and that begs the question, why can't he leave the hex? You know, is, but is, it is, all is it because s- that infinity, uh, the, the reality stone is not... Like, Real? Uh, real like what's what is that it also begs the question about why you know can tommy and billy leave the hex and why monica was able to well we don't know if tommy Billy can't leave yeah we don't we don't i i i'm standing behind that technically tommy billy can particularly because i felt like billy was able to hear the voice of the k-word and everybody outside and Mm -hmm. regardless of how he was able to hear the fact is that he was able to hear outside the hex yes so i'm gonna go with that too okay Because I like I, them kids, and I do not want to see them. And it should hurt me enough if Vision goes. So yeah, yeah. Um, with Darcy, I know that was a letdown for some people. They thought she was going to become her two broke girls character in this episode. No, she just became a part of the circus, but not quite. She was rewritten into being an escape artist, mm-hmm. which is what she's been doing this whole time. As a she, she, she's just a lightweight hacker, so. She's been doing this. Um, she wears her little performer outfit. Even the style of her glasses have changed. Maybe her glasses seem like glasses that one of her characters wore in another show. But you got me. She, she's basically herself, just in a new costume. Yep. I love that the whole clown, the shield agent, was the one who she punches out. It's the same one who didn't bring her coffee. Oh, and, that was. <laughs> yep. And there's also a quick reference to like her talking about the clown car, you know, a whole clown car scientist when she's first being brought in and you see clown cars and all that. So, okay, you know, a little cute shit. Very cute. And then finally, in the character segment of this conversation, we have Tommy and Billy. Billy, who we know in the comments has Wiccan. We know his, his, his powers have been activated. He tells Wanda at one point that his head hurts and it's too noisy, insisting or intimating that he can hear potentially within and outside of the hex he hears everyone's voices he, that telepathy is going wild uh and when he when the boys are with agnes or, or agatha he tells agnes i like it here i like you because you're quiet on the inside 
Mm. What does that mean? Is that saying that he can't hear her thoughts? You know, as as far as I know, Billy is essentially psychic, right? In ways. In yeah. ways, right? So is he saying he can't hear her thoughts like he can hear everyone else because she's different or it's because Agatha is blocking, like she, she, she's, she's masking her thoughts from being read? Can she not be read just due to her nature? Like, what, what is that saying? I think it's saying all those different things all at once. It's also saying that Billy is hearing the thoughts of everyone in the town. And since everyone in the town has two sets of thoughts, he's hearing a lot. Yeah. So it's just mad noisy in general. And Agatha's house, which also is a pretty note by note recreation of the house from the exterior of Bewitched, mm. which is hilarious because once again, you know, the witch witch. is house. So there we go. Mm. Yeah. And I think Agatha's house is just blocked off from all that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was hard for Monica to get inside, but, and, except for the the storm door when she was able to get into the mm-hmm. basement. Yep. Which is the only part of the house technically not affected by the hex. So hmm. we'll see. We'll see. I mean, remember, it doesn't look like the rest of the house. So. Yes, it doesn't look like the rest of the world. Yeah, it's actually the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and this next one, this is uh, this is super reaching. Um, where you said like you mentioned Ben earlier that they said the symbols in the lair could have been some other character symbols. Immortus. The Immortus. Okay. And when when Billy and Tommy playing the video game, I was actually able to get that actual half a frame where you can see the game itself. And they're playing. It looks like they're in space, flying ships around. Maybe they're dog fighting. Whatever. The ships could <laughs> resemble ships from Marvel Universe. Could just be a throwaway. Just wow. putting it yeah. out there. Okay, I'm gonna I'm let that one go. Yeah, <laughs> it could, it could. I, and I was looking at different ships to see if they even, like, even they look kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy type ships. Who, it, it could be nothing. But just wanted to make that make that clear. Uh, Tommy gets on. to the controller first because he has super speed. Yes. Yeah. Of course, he would get there first. Yeah. Um, moving on to the commercial. Mm-hmm. This is big. This is a big. Because of the themes, but also what it all represents. So we come into what's considered a, a antidepressant commercial for a drug called Nexus. It's this commercial styled in the form of these medication commercials, like like the Zoloft commercials, where mm-hmm. they talk about your side effects and they have this person who's walking around real depressed and all of a sudden everything's chipper and happy once they take the drug. Uh, the side effects in this commercial says, feeling your feelings, confronting your truth, Seizing your destiny and possibly more depression. So is Nexus quite an antidepressant or is Nexus the reality? Nexus is the reality. Feeling your feelings, confronting your truth, possibly more destiny, depression, but you seize your destiny. Right. And and what we talked about, about going through depression and how it's not necessarily something you win against. It's something you you you, you fight through. Mm-hmm. And you have to do all these things in order to come up on the other side. Yep. It mentions that the Nexus drug is made up of 10.3% of Nexopromicide, which is a made up drug. Um, it's As far as I know, it's not real or even a reference to any real drug. But if you want to get deep and read into the the suffixes of this word, so side part, C-I-D-E, in Latin, that means the killing of. Yep. Um, other people have have broke down this word a little bit. They said next means to join, um, promo, something about togetherness or whatever. So it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make that reach right now. But that the drug could just mean the killing of something, like the killing of reality or the who 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 knows? It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, I I wanted to make a point of some of the words or some of the sentences that they say during commercial. Uh, in the beginning, they say, "Do you just want to be left alone?" We see this Wanda requesting it several times from anyone trying to disturb her as she's in the hex. Um, it says, works to anchor you back into reality, all the reality of your choice. We've been mm. seeing that throughout every episode. You should not take Nexus unless your doctor has cleared you to move on with your life. I, Again, just just a wild type of, <laughs> just a wild comment to make. But what I see you, I see the wheels turning in your head. Then <laughs> what I mean, does that mean? <laughs> what doctor is she talking about? You know, uh, oh, what doctor, doctor Strange? are you talking about? Mm. And also the 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 quote of because the world doesn't revolve around you, or does it? Mm-hmm. Wanda's very own world. At least in this episode, the world really does revolve around her. What else does this Nexus commercial could be referring to? 
Oh yeah. Um, it probably refers to two things in the Marvel Universe: the nexus of all realities, which is basically what the name says, the nexus of all realities. It is a place where all the realities of the multiverse converge. It's usually, at least in the main 616 Marvel Universe, located in this swamp where uh, this character, the Man-Thing, resides. And so the Man-Thing is like a swamp monster. A uh, swamp thing? He's, the Man-Thing and Swamp Thing are one of those things where they were created at the exact same time and they're not really biting off each other. It just happened like that, I think. Okay. I can't remember. It's that vision of Red Tornado. For those who don't know, there's a DC character called Red Tornado who is an android who is red. And is Swamp Thing is Swamp Thing is DC though, right? Yeah, Swamp Thing, a man thing, or DC versus Marvel, just like Red Tornado okay. is DC versus Vision's Marvel. But I know in the Red Tornado and Vision case, they were like created at the same time. It mm. just happened, you know, like two people reached into the ether and grabbed the idea of red androids. Okay, that yeah, happens. It just, yeah, it just happened. I'm not sure about Swamp Thing and Man Thing, but Man Thing usually protects the nexus of re- all realities. You know, from there you can get to any other point in the multiverse. Yeah, we see yeah. these roots, you know, like that. So that could be the nexus of all realities right there because we see these thick ass roots like you would see in a swamp. Yeah. Oh, that's facts. Mm-hmm. And and in the comic book reference, the nexus is a cross dimensional gateway. Yep. Which provides a pathway to any and all possible realities, mm-hmm. including realities between realities. And it's not known whether it was created by someone or is just a place where all the energies of the multiverse just seem to naturally intersect. Yes. And like I said, it's normally lo- at least in the main MCU, it's no- located in the swamp where the man thing resides and he usually protects it. The other reference to uh, Nexus, which has come up a lot in our twitch.tv slash 4 nerds chat, is the Nexus being, which is Wanda is a Nexus being in the comic books, which means that she is unique in all the multiverses. There's only one Wanda, unlike in every other you know character, whatever multiverse you go to, you're going to find a version of them. I see. Wow, yes, yeah. But yeah, so she's just one, and there's other people like her who are just Nexus beings. And in the comics, Nexus beings are repositories of magic. They also have a lot to do with time and reality and all these things that Wanda, you know, has always had. So they're also monitored in the Marvel Universe by the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, who we have seen already being shown in the Loki trailer. The Time Variance Authority is going to play a big part of Loki and probably the MCU going forward because... Owen Wilson's character works for them. Mm, and they monitor, you know, time variance and make sure everything in time stays the way it should be or the way they want it to be, whatever the case may be. Okay. Phew. So, yes, Wanda is both a Nexus being in the comics and also has had experience with the Nexus of all realities. So, it's probably referring to both of these things, both of Bova. And, but I am going to Jersey is the Nexus of all realities in the MCU. That just sounds right. It does sound right. Yeah. Dirty Jersey. And you saw something else in the commercial? Did I now? Something about power and multi? Oh, yes. That's right. There we go. Thank you. I'll be forgetting all these damn things I see in the commercial. When uh, the woman, who is the same woman we've seen in all these commercials, walks into the pharmacy, which is, I want to say Life Aid is the name of the pharmacy. She walks into it, and there's the man behind the counter, the pharmacist, who's the same man we've seen in all these commercials. He's handing her the Nexus drug, but behind him on the wall, mad drugs like in any pharmacy. But the only ones that you can really read are a couple of bottles. One of them says, well, there's a B, like B vitamin, and then next to it, multi, like B multi, like B multiverse, whatever. And then the other one that you can readily read is one that says power times 10. Now, there we go, right? People have been trying to make uh, all these commercials relate to all the stones. That to me is the only one that makes this relate to the power stone and makes this work. <laughs> and also, other than the fact that we talked about this purple power energy earlier, that's pretty much the only things that makes this infinity stone theory stay up. Sticks? So, yeah, we might have been hey, reaching. Hey. <laughs> There's a lot of yoga going on with this show, but what do you expect? It's It's like yo, gabba, gabba, yoga. uh, Yo, it's so many layers and it's so much really good and intentional writing, which it, it, some of it fits and some of it doesn't, but that's Mm -hmm. kind of the fun of all of this, right? Yep. I just wonder what, you know, Winter and, you know, Winter Soldier and Falcon is going to be like. 
Yeah. Because yeah. I know that all these Marvel shows, you know, work. Faye's like, yeah. at this point, I'm, I'm seeing the Faye's like, yo, do something wild. You know, that's what it seems to be. <laughs> Just do so, something wild. Just I know legs interlocked with each other. <laughs> yeah, and I know <laughs> they're going to do something wild with it, but it's be a whole different type of wild. So I want to see what they do. Like, yeah, did totally. they get all the money and are like going, you know, like where we're going to see this insane action and this crazy ass, you know, conspiracy story with all that type of stuff. That's what I want. I want to see some Manchurian candidates, some, oh, uh, uh, what my joint? The French Connection, you know, them old school spy movies and shit. That's what I want from Winter Soldier. Oh, so that brings us to our Easter eggs and inspirations as we close out this episode. We finally get a mid credit scene at the end. Those seven minutes of credits actually mean something this time, I guess. <laughs> we get that scene of Monica searching around to try to get into Agatha's house to find a way in. She finds that basement storm door, opens it, and can see that purple aggressive energy coursing through the roots. And Pietro pops up behind her saying, Snooper's gonna snoop. Also interesting about that, we get the mid credit scene because this episode is the first to end on that aspect ratio. Where we're in the MCU, mm. where you always get a mid we're or end credit scene. We're in a cinema. Scene. Okay, we're in a cinematic world right now. Okay. Yep. So in the cinematic world, we always get a mid or end credit scene. This is facts. Very good, Ben. So I think we're going to continue. Like I said, I think, I'm not sure how much of the last two episodes are to be in WandaVision anymore. I would like to see one more, you know, just a bit, just to see some more jokes and stuff. But I think... I, I, I don't know, because they already reached the mid-2000s at this point. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I think the Nets up, and there's no real more evolution in TV yet, you know, as far as, like, Modern Family's still on the air right now, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know what else they could do, and I, unless they do, like we said, all about, you know, it's been Agatha all along in that episode. Let's see. Yep. This episode had tons of mid-2000s mockumentary-style TV and comedy and even kids shows. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Modern Family, The Office, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, I got that reference with the whole weather report because, again, it was always sunny every single day. But it was never sunny in Philadelphia. I think that was the whole point of the show. It's right. Like it's never opposites. sunny. And, yeah. and, and you can liken that to Westview, right? Technically, mm -hmm. it's not really sunny in Westview either. Nope. Things are effed up. You mentioned Yo Gabba Gabba. They actually showed the real life characters from that show in the mm -hmm. TV when Wanda had the TV on. Uh, on that show, a kid's show, the DJ comes in and says these magic words, Yo Gabba Gabba, and then a bunch of toys come to life. Yep. So Wanda's the DJ. She's controlling this magical world. Or maybe it's Agatha. You can Agatha. liken it to anybody. Yeah. Um, uh, Easter egg. Wanda's comforter has a hexagon pattern. Her pillow does not, while Visions does. Because Vision um, because, is in the hex and yep. Wanda is not. That too. Uh, the soda in the fridge, we mentioned that's named after one of the production managers for Marvel. Sweeney Sugar Snaps, which were those like Frosted Flakes like cereals, is another creator as well as a reference to the snap mm -hmm. that we know that happened in Infinity War Endgame. Yep, there's several there, of them. Like, like yeah. now, you got, there's like three snaps, right? Uh, yeah. There's oh Thanos, there's Hulk, and then there's Iron Man. Uh, there is the WNDA or Wanda radio station that says that the kids are back home asleep waiting for the next holiday episode. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> the, the they say they'll be props. there next year. Yeah, the kids are just props. Uh, Sword, I, I I actually missed this, and this was a good call. catch, Ben. Yeah, we know we know that Sword got rewritten into the circus when it got pulled into the hex. But what does their new acronym stand for? The new acronym on um, one of the trucks that they are running by when uh, Vision and Darcy are talking is. Spectacular world of rapturous entertainment. Yes. And finally, what is this about the delivery man? The delivery man is presto with a rabbit. The delivery man, the same mailman that we've been seeing, who I am now, I mean, he who, might who be was, Mephisto. Who was also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, he might he played be Master. A different, he played waiter or a waiter in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, he might be Master Pandemonium. He played a waiter, I think. I don't think he was a big character. <laughs> okay, um, so he played a waiter. But he, but he, but the camera made a point to linger on him while he smirked. While oh, no, it's been lingering on him. On. He's been doing a lot of weird things throughout this series. Yeah. He does the finger guns, which we talked about before. You know, certain characters do the finger guns. He says, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just a messenger to Agatha earlier. It seems that they are in some type of cohorts, but... Uh, his thing has Boots. changed some yeah. Yeah, uh, lay, uh, a Amazon type delivery suit, but it says Presto, which is a magic, magic. term, Presto, and it's got a rabbit symbol on it. 
scratchy. Oh. What if multiply. he is scratchy? Because also, mm. you could think about, because in the comics, Agatha also has a familiar. I forgot yep. the actual the name cat, of the familiar. The uh, cat, Ebony. Okay, so she has this cat that can take on different forms. To your point, is the delivery man actually her familiar? Is that also, because he seems to be, is he all, I don't know if he's always around when Agatha's around, but that's not the point. Uh, the point of familiar also is that you have this tie to your master and your master can essentially you can be their eyes and ears. You can you can send your familiar to other places and be able to scope out what's happening in the scene and all the other stuff. So what if the delivery man is her familiar? Uh, I think maybe, but I don't know. I'm leaning on him being someone else. That's another quick note on, the rabbit? Yeah. on the on the cat. We hear a meow when um, Wanda walks into the domain, into the dungeon. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I hear that. Wow. Yep. Little things, little things. Wow. Yep. Uh, and finally, we want to make a point about the music. Go into that, Ben. I mean, oh, the bop of the year, replacing <laughs> toss a coin to your Witcher. What we're replacing it? Yeah, oh. we gotta replace it. I'm sorry, Agatha all along. Yeah. Oof. What's so was... special about that song? Well, what's so special about the song? The whole intro when they go into the song, when they flip black and back to black and white. The font of Agatha all along is all borrowed from the Monsters, an old TV show from 1964, which uh, dun, 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 here come the monsters or something like that. I can't remember the, the tune, but yeah. the melody of Agatha all along, we all love it and know it because it's a melody that was sampled from the Monsters. So they replayed I, whatever you want to call it. I had no idea. I, mm-hmm. I listened to it right before we started recording, and I was like, holy crap, it's the same exact melody. Yep. Uh, same sample. I mean, it's a sample at this point. And that, yeah. that's just, music is just incredible. And that's always shows you, like, if it's a bop thing, it's going to be a bop now. And it's ingrained into your consciousness. So even, even if you never watched the Monsters, you at some point have probably heard that theme song. And it's one mm. of those instantly catchy theme songs that it's just going to be bopped into your head. And if you don't know it, you know, because it was on, like, repeats that'd be the shit you'd watch when you know like when you were staying home from school when i was a kid you know because it was old but my parents of course grew up on that shit so they knew it so it's just like one of those mm. things that's in your dna pretty much yeah like when your parents know usually they, they make you watch or listen to it yeah or you've heard it at some point you know so it's just in your blood and if it's a bop it's a bop so there you go. i got the all on but you know the lyrics and all that were just brilliant as well that's just and just the use of it to yeah. flip to the monsters, to go back to the black and white show, that, you know, one of the earliest TV shows. That was great. And you'll probably see this on our views from 616 Twitter page. But I've heard this song in multiple languages. Mm. I've heard it in Portuguese, Spanish. Uh, what else have I heard it in? Um, French and also in Japanese. And nice. let me tell you, the Japanese one goes hard. Kind of I think that's my there. absolute favorite one. So you, you all, if you, as long as you're following the views from 616 Twitter page, you'll be able to hear what all of those different versions of that song sounds like. And I'm I'm waiting for the trap version. It's probably already been done. I'm oh, there's one. The trap we'll, version. What will happen on this episode? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> and that is it, everyone. That is our review of episode Oof. seven of WandaVision, Breaking the Fourth Wall. Thank you so much for joining us. As per usual, we always have a blast breaking down all the different Easter eggs and themes of this show. And again, we are views from the 616, the blackest MCU podcast in the universe. If you liked what you heard and you want to continue to support us, please do a couple of things. Or you can pick one, do all, whatever you like. Hit us up on our Patreon, patreon.com slash for all nerds. That's where you can become a financial member of the fan fam and get some great perks as well as be able to talk to us directly whenever you want and also be able to be part of our shows because really you're one of our producers. Mm -hmm. We also encourage you to go to our T public page where we have the new designs for WandaVision. We have our little vision vert (laughs) t-shirt design with Wanda with the box braids. Thank you, Mr. Morris. And we also, um, this is not WandaVision related, but this is new merch. We also have a new Storm design mm-hmm. out there. So, I mean, hell, it's, it's, it's X-Men related, which is Marvel related. So it's all connected, y'all. It's all in the multiverse. Shout out to Stitch Sawyer, the artist on that Storm design, because that joint is fuego. And it is an exclusive design for all nerds. So he yes. has lots of designs with, with different 
Marvel characters on motorcycles, but this specific Storm one is only available on our site. So if you want it, you got to go there. And to mm-hmm. get there, you go to tpublic.com slash stores with an S slash for all nerds. Yep. And make sure, as always, you are subscribed to us. How else are you listening? We are everywhere on your favorite podcast platform. That's like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and iHeartRadio and Stitcher, SoundCloud, every freaking where. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're subscribed on one, subscribe on all of them. Leave a rating. Let us know how much you love us. If you don't love us, I don't know what to tell you. Keep listening. Thanks for the views. Word up. And make sure you are watching us every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Twitch.tv slash For All Nerds. You can catch us doing this live. You can see our beautiful faces, our smiling faces. You get to see the jokes. And plus, the chat is so lit. So many people are in there every week with all kind of theories. It goes down every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also catch us Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the regular For All Nerds show. Mm -hmm. Plus, much more to come to our Twitch channel in the coming weeks. Two more episodes of WandaVision. I thought, I was, I was thinking we were going to do a wrap-up show, but we're going to see. Because we might need that break. We might need a week off until we get to Winter Soldier. Because then we got we're Winter... going to have like a week, right? Yeah, we get a week off, and then we got Winter Soldier. <laughs> and that same week, we got Justice League dropping. Lord. So, yeah, I know. But we, you, you know we're going to have to feed the streets. You Hardest know we got... working podcast in the industry. Hey, you know, it is what it is. It is... What it is! <laughs>